Okay, so let's begin by looking at Dr. John Snow's cholera study. Now, John Snow was a fellow who was really, really interested in public health issues. And he did quite a few public health mapping exercises in his day. He's regarded by many as being the father of epidemiology, which is the study of diseases. So we're about to talk about a study from the 1850s. Now, there's a number of parallels with modern GIS that I want you to look out for as we go through this. The first is that he geocoded the subjects for his study. In other words, he mapped where people were when they became symptomatic of cholera. Now, this idea of taking a list of people's addresses and, and putting them on a map is what's called geocoding. And we do that all the time in GIS, and he was doing that even back in the 1850s. The importance of field validation to address data quality issues. This is just so important. It becomes really obvious at the end of this um, little talk that a purely GIS technology solution would not have yielded a convincing result for uh, Dr. Snow. Okay, If he just accepted the maps at face value and, and took them to uh, the city mayor and, and, uh, and, and other health officials his results would have been inconclusive. And as a sub-issue to that, the importance of map quality issues. Maps should not be accepted at face value because they're often incomplete. Now, we're going to see that exact thing in this study. And I think this issue uh, these days of accepting GIS maps at face value is a place where I think a lot of GIS professionals fall over. A lot of them are, are far too ready to take canned data at uh, face value and it, and it leads to uh, poor outcomes quite often. The other thing to look out for is that um, Dr. Snow even did network analysis. You know, Google Maps will allow you to work out an optimal route from between two points on a map. Uh, he was doing that sort of thing even back in the 1850s. Okay, so let's have a bit of a look at this study. In September 1854, Dr. Snow became aware of a cholera outbreak in the Soho district of London. So what we're talking about is we're talking about this area here with the, uh, with the dotted line or dashed line. Okay. Now cholera is this really, really infectious waterborne disease. And it can literally kill in hours. People would say goodbye to their loved ones in the morning and they'd not make it home um, for dinner at night. It was that vigorous as a disease. Now, during the outbreak, 515 people died in just 10 days. So it was pretty nasty. Now, John Snow believed that the Broad Street well, this well here, is or was the most likely source of the cholera outbreak, but he needed to prove that. So he created this map here that showed where each of the 500 cholera victims uh, were when they became symptomatic of um, cholera. Now, a couple of things with this. The first thing is that um, what he did was he just put a dashed line at the street address, okay, and this is that geocoding thing that I was talking about before. He actually geocoded these people. The other thing to be aware of is the address that he elected to geocode them. It wasn't their home address. It was the address where they became symptomatic. Now, that sort of issue is very important for those of you who are considering study design for any study that you might be doing. But he could see that there were some anomalies in, in his map. So he did a, a detailed investigation of, of 83 deaths that occurred over a three-day period. So simplistically, at the end of the study, John Snow was able to convince local officials that the Broad Street pump was the source of the infection. They removed the pump handle and the outbreak ceased. Now, he could not have reached this conclusion based on a mapping exercise alone. So let's look at some of the anomalies that he saw in the map. He noticed five major anomalies. 
that required explanation if his hypothesis was to be supported. So he donned his boots and interviewed local residents. So here's another GIS parallel. Thematic maps should not be taken at face value. They do require field validation. Yes, field work is important and you will really see that by the end of these uh, next few slides. So the first anomaly was that, you know, there's people died here from cholera next to a well. Why was that? And when he went around and he interviewed some of the local residents, what he discovered was that they didn't like the water. The water had a really bad taste. So people from here were actually travelling all the way to Broad Street to get water from the Broad Street pump because it was known locally as having very pleasant tasting water. So the second anomaly, there's this workhouse here. There were 535 people living in this workhouse, but no one there had died of cholera. And it turned out that the workhouse had its own private bore, and they weren't using the water from the Broad Street pump, they were using their own water. So um, nobody, of course, um, had died. Let's look at the next one. The third anomaly. There were no deaths in this brewery. Look how close this brewery is to the Broad Street pump. You'd think there would have been quite a few deaths there, but there were none. And it turns out, once again, that the brewery had its own private bores. So everyone there was drinking water from that private bore. But not only that, the brewery also had a free beer policy. So the role of beer in public health should not be laughed at. In the day, it was often safer to drink beer than it was to drink water. That's because uh, if you want to make beer, you, firstly, you need to boil the water to sterilise it, and, and also the alcohol in the beer has a, another sterilising effect as well. Now, between um, this anomaly and the previous one, there's a really, really important GIS parallel, and that is a data quality one. The two wells that were really important to um, John Snow's analysis were wells that had not been mapped. So GIS databases also suffer from these sorts of errors. And these are known as errors of omission. So just be sure when you're using um, GIS maps, um, for those themes that are really, really important to your analyses, just double check that they're complete. Anomaly four. Now, there's this well down here, but there's people that died of cholera near this well here, near this well. It turns out that even though it looks very close on the map, the street pattern means that this area here is uh, quite distant. And that's because this well here is at a dead end and people need to sort of walk a fair way to get to it. So people once again were travelling to the Broad Street well to get their water rather than a well that on the map appears to be close, uh, but in actual fact it's not. So in this day and age, if this was to be automated in a GIS, this sort of analysis, that would be known as network analysis. So anomaly number five, there was a low death rate in this area here. And without field work, he wouldn't have discovered that when the outbreak first occurred, this area here was pretty much evacuated, okay? People just left. So there was really no one here to, to uh, die of cholera. So th that's another really important for people who are looking at study design, and it's why social researchers should always use strict data collection methodologies. So to sum up, there are so many parallels between this study and the way you would repeat it using a GIS. The important thing is that rather than using the map of a cholera outbreak as a gospel, Dr. Snow uses it as a guide for his investigation. Field work is often such an important part of GIS mapping projects, and you should not be afraid to do it. Too many um, GIS professionals too often 
accept GIS maps at face value when they shouldn't. Okay, we will meet again in the next video. But before we go, I just really want to uh, say thanks to the UCLA Department of Epidemiology. They've just got this really brilliant site dedicated to Dr. Snow, and uh, it made the research for this uh, little video uh, pretty easy to do, or a lot easier than it otherwise would have been.